Good morning, everyone. My name is Marco Andoni. Uh, today I'm going to be the, your instructor of intermediate algebra, and I'm going to talk about scientific notation and uh, exponential expressions. Let me start right away with an example. 6 raised to the 4 means 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. 6 raised to the 4 is, uh, is called an exponential expression. The super index 4 in the example is called the exponent, and the main number, which is 6 in the example, is called the base. So the meaning of the uh, exponential expression 6 to the 4 is uh, um, the base 6 multiplied by itself as many times as it's dictated by the uh, exponent, uh, which is 4. So I wrote 6 uh, 4 times to all. <clears throat> this concept uh, can be generalized to an arbitrary exponential expressions x to the p. Uh, there is no particular requirement on x other than it's a real number, any real number, because we can multiply by itself any real number. And I'm going to write this condition with uh, these uh, symbols. I'm going to say that x belongs to the set of the real numbers. So it is a real number. And uh, for every exponent p, which is a positive integer. And uh, this is the notation for the set of the positive integers. So p belongs to the set, so p is a positive integer. So uh, similarly, x to the p is x times itself a number of times, as many times as uh, it's uh, dictated by the exponent p. A nice property of exponential expressions is that uh, when they multiply uh, or divide um, the result, uh, sometimes it also is an exponential expression. For example, if I multiply x to the 3, which is an exponential expression, by another exponential expression with the same base x, but exponent, uh, let's say 2, for example. Uh, by the definition, this is uh, x times x times x times x times x. I use the definition of x to the 3. In fact, I wrote uh, three, uh, uh, x 3 times. And uh, I have, then I wrote x 2 times because the second exponent is 2. This is a big product. Uh, and uh, because the product uh, has the associative property, I can get rid of the parentheses. So this is x times x times x times x times x, which also looks like uh, an exponential expression. I have x times itself a number of times, so it is an exponential expression. The base is going to be x, and the exponent is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Uh, observe that uh, 5 comes from uh, the sum between uh, 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 3 and 2. Uh, I have uh, 3 axes at first, 2 axes later. Total is 5 axes. And 3 and 2 really come from uh, the exponents. So I can generalize this uh, case to the situation when uh, the exponents uh, are arbitrary. Uh, so in general, x to the p times x to the q equals to x raised to the p plus q power. There is a, another rule that uh, applies when we have uh, a division. So it's called, we can call it a quotient rule. If we have uh, x to the p divided by x to the q, this also can be written in a special way. But let's show it with an example. So let's say that uh, p is 5 and q is uh, 2. Just to make an example. Then we have the definition, x to the 5 is x times x times x times x times x. And x to the 2, by the definition, is x times x. Now, here we have uh, uh, a fraction where the certain factors at the numerator, other factors at the denominator, and uh, they match. They're both x both on top and on the bottom. 
problems, so we can cancel them out. He checks on top, we can cancel with the matching symbol, another extra on the bottom. So we can do it once, two times, and then we have to stop because there are no other axes on the bottom. So what is left, what is not being cancelled out, is x times x times x. And again, uh, x times x times x is, uh, uh, can be written as an exponential expression, where the base is x and the exponent is 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to write x to the 3. from 5 minus 2 because uh, I originally had uh, 5 axes on the bottom from the exponent uh, 5 then uh, I removed 2 because I cancelled them with the 2 axes on the bottom that come from the exponent 2 so really this 3 comes from 5 minus 2 which are uh, the exponents that I started with in general if the exponents are p and q instead of 5 and 2 I can uh, I will end up with x raised to the p minus p. It all looks fine, except uh, the one guarantee is that uh, if p and q are positive integers, p minus q is also a positive integer. In fact, uh, it is true that it is an integer, but it might be negative. For example, if p is 2 and q is 5, p minus 2 will be minus 3, which is negative. And we have now defined exponential expression with a negative exponent. I'm going to do it now. I will define x to the 0, which also I've now defined as 1. And x to the minus p as 1 over x to the p. Uh, for p positive integer, if p is a positive integer, minus p is a negative integer, so this is a definition for um, exponential expressions with negative exponents. And uh, uh, after introducing these new definitions, I have a definition of exponential expressions for uh, any integer exponent. And uh, once I've done that, uh, the rules that we've seen, the, the product rule and the quotient rule, uh, apply for any such pair of uh, uh, integer exponents. Uh, so even if p is less than q, uh, the quotient rule will hold with a negative exponent, which will satisfy this definition. Now, this is uh, all I had to say. If you have questions, I will be very happy to answer them. Uh, what about when q is a negative? Uh, would that be an example of a no solution? Uh, well, this is not uh, about problems, this is about uh, giving definition of uh, uh, the exponential expressions and giving some uh, property that exponential expressions have uh, with, um, in relation with uh, products uh, and quotients. So the, there is no problem, uh, but when uh, Q or P are negative, we use the definition that uh, I introduced for uh, negative exponents uh, to, to calculate. It's a convenient definition that allows product rule and quotient rule to hold for any pair of integers. So it has a nice algebraic properties, and that's why it's been defined this way. Does that answer your question?